Howdy folks, Mr. Reed here and welcome to One More Question. So what we're going to take a look at today is if we were to know a single point on an original function and we wanted to follow that point through uh, an algebraic statement that had some inverse going on in it and it also had some transformations, could we get the point that existed on the new function that involves inverses and transformations um, by starting with one single original point on a first function. Uh, so if what you want to do is kind of play around with the algebraic approach to doing all this, then you're in the right place. And let's get to it. All right, so it's kind of a nastier looking setup because the g of x function, it isn't real pretty. Uh, so I'm going to copy it down even though it's above me because I like to have it in front of me as I, I go through it. So that is g of x is equal to one third f inverse of negative four x minus two plus five. Now the original point that we have on f of x is three comma negative two. So f of x contains that. What that means is that right away we can say that f inverse is going to contain negative two comma three because it would just be the x and the y values um, switched. So f inverse must contain that. Now, to me, the way that I approach these might be different than some people, but that means I know what happens when the argument to my f inverse function uh, is negative two. If we were to have a negative two for our f inverse, I'm guaranteed that this is gonna kick out a three. Actually, that's the only thing that I know f inverse will give us. So I'm gonna bake it in that we will have to make a negative two for the argument of f inverse. Now, if I were to bring your attention to where f inverse is in the big overall g function, it would be right there. So I underlined it, and so I know what happens when f inverse is acting on negative two. So I'm gonna set the inside part of this equal to negative two and see what x value would have to be happening in order for that to take place. So we're actually gonna get negative four X is equal to zero, which means that X is going to be equal to zero. So if my X is zero, I can guarantee that that inner argument is gonna be negative two. And if the inner argument is negative two for F inverse, F inverse and negative two gives us three. So this whole underlying part that I have up at the very top, this whole thing has a value of three. So if that thing kicks at a value of three, then that means that one third of three is gonna be one plus five is gonna give us six. So if I were to put in an X value of zero, I know that the G of zero is gonna be F inverse of negative two, which is three. So a third of three, one plus five is six. So this G of zero gives us six which means I know a point on G. That point is, if we have an X of zero, we get a Y value or a G of X value of zero. So that's basically the way that I approach it. I try to set my inner argument equal to the only value I know the behavior of. So I figure out what my X has to be to create that argument and then I know what the value is because that's the Y value of the single point that I know. Then we just have to basically stretch and move that y value by algebraically following what the stretch on the front and the uh, shift is going to be from the end. So in this case, we multiply by a third, added five, and we got to that point. So hopefully you found that helpful. Uh, it's a bit of uh, it looks nasty, but it's not too bad to take yourself through. Uh, so get some practice with that, and you'll probably feel fine. Um, so it was good. Like, subscribe, and as always. Take care, folks.